Welcome. My name is Colleen Tauke and I'm the sewing specialist at Funds and Porter. In this Quilting Quickly tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the tools and the templates to create the blocks for the quilt holiday whirl that you see behind me. Okay, we're going to be using pre-cut five inch strips of some wonderful um, batik reds and greens a background fabric and then an accent of gold for the center of the holiday pinwheel things and the cornerstones on this quilt. Now in order to purchase this pattern you can visit our website or to purchase the tools you see here. Those are also available. Let's get in and look at what the pieces of the template set um, actually look like. There are four pieces in the set. We have the um, A shape which is the blades of the pinwheel we have two background pieces, B and C are both cut from backgrounds. Um, you see that the one has a narrower um, outer edge, one has a wider one, so they're just a little bit different that makes that turning type effect. And then we have a template here that's a circle for the very centers. So we'll put the templates aside here and I'll pull out the actual quilt block and we'll look at its construction. Now it looks like curved seams, oh no. But these are curved seams that are fairly easy, um, gentle curves. So they're definitely doable. This one hasn't quite been finished. We've got the applique um, circle that will go in the very center. But I wanted you to notice that it could be left without the applique also. If that's something you quite haven't gotten into yet, applique, it could even be done without it. So that's an option. Okay, let's look at how we cut the blades for this quilt block. What we're going to be using, we'll do the blades first, and we're going to be using reds and greens and batiks, those pre-cut strips. I'm going to use a rotating mat for this so that I can cut from a safe direction. I'll try to put it out here so it's a little easier for you to see. And what we're going to be doing then with the blades is that we're going to be wanting to lay the longest leg side of this blade along a straight of grain. That will help reduce some of the stretch because this curve and this diagonal are both going to be bias edges, which means they have a little bit more stretch to them. So if we can at least get one side on straighted grain, we can kind of reduce the amount of distortion that may occur in our piecing. And what you can do, when you get a little bit more confident, you can cut through layers at a time. And then we're also going to be looking at the positioning. So I've got laid here for one, and then I'm going to come back and do two, three, down my strip. But when you first begin, it's best probably just to do one layer at a time and get confident with the cutting. Now, I'm going to be um, using a smaller rotary cutting blade that helps um, to do those curves a little more smoothly. The longer the blade is a little more to manipulate and at this point I can just go off the side. The reason why I'm using this rotating mat is that I don't have to reposition the um, template. I can just come in and always be cutting in a safe direction away from my body. Like that to get a nice clean shape. Then you would, like I said, you would just then continue down the strip, positioning the template and using it the most efficient. So since it's got kind of a shape there, I can come in and slide it down and cut my next piece. And you'll be cutting reds and greens. You'll notice that they alternate down this, um, as in each of the blocks it uses th four reds and four greens. Okay, oh, well, we also need to then cut our background pieces. And those are cut off of strips that you cut from your background fabric. Your pattern will give you the width of the strip to use. Again, I'm going to use that rotating mat. Sticky dots sometimes help keep us organized. I'm going to kind of puddle my fabric on here so that I can keep it all on the mat and cut safely. Again, I'm going to be, I'm going to do two layers on this one and show you this is the fold here. This is the selvage edges here. Come in cut and then rotate so you can cut that inside curve. This is where that smaller blade really comes into play trying to do those inside curves much easier with a smaller um, size rotary blade. So there are some of my pieces 
And then we also have the wider one, so you have a wider strip for the other template. Same technique, you would just lay that on your strip. Again, the long leg of this, the, these two templates, you place along the cut edge, your straight edge of your strip. Again, that helps um, create some stability in your blocks because that's straight of grain, and again, you're going to have bias edges here. So you would go ahead and cut here, rotate, and cut the, the remainder of those out, outer wedge piece shapes. Okay, now that we have pieces cut, we're going to talk about the construction quickly. And the pieces with the narrow piece here are the ones that have green. So we're going to place green like this, and those would be seamed together. If you have not done curve piecing, if it's something new to you, we offer in, um, at our website what we call so easy lessons. And those are lessons that will teach you things like curve piecing or strip piecing or how to cut with templates. So visit our website to learn more about those so easy, those little mini lessons that you can pick up those extra skills maybe you haven't, haven't attempted yet. So the curve piecing, the pieces will go together here, and then you will join. And I have some already sewn, so we'll bring those, I'll bring those in for you. See how those curves go together? They're a gentle enough curve. They're not hard to stitch. You're going to want to press your seam allowances on this towards your, um, the light fabric here. It helps reduce the bulk. If you try to push the seam lenses towards the curve, it's going to get lumpy and thick. They'll, they will want to go towards the background fabric. So then you're going to join this together, and that will create a quadrant of your block. I have three more to join in here. Once you've got a quadrant done, then you've got the repetition of making the other pieces that will go into the entire block. So then join rows together, and you've created that center block, but you have to one piece left. You've got the little applique in the center. So let's address that quickly. The fun part of making this is that you can choose your favorite applique technique. Now, if you like to do um, needle turn, you can do it that way. You could also use fusible applique for, for our um, interfacing. Those, again, would be some of the so easy lessons you can find at our site. The, the one that was done here by the quilt designer, Diane, she used the template, traced the shape onto um, heat and bond or a fusible product, and then simply transferred the back, cut this out and transferred it to the fabric to make an iron on. Just follow the instructions that come with your product. There are different types of ones out there. Then you just basically are creating an iron-on circle for the center of your quilt block. And then applique it in the center like this. And finish it with your favorite um, edge stitching, either zigzag or blank stitch, to create that center of your um, holiday pinwheel. This uh, then is finished with sashing. You can see red sashing going horizontally through the quilt, green sashing going vertically with the yellow cornerstones. For more of our, our video tutorials, you can visit our website. Thanks for joining me today.